What's up, guys? This is Daniel Cormier, and you're listening to WFAN's Outside the Cage podcast. This is Outside the Cage, the host Ike Feldman and Pete Hoffman, and we are being joined by one of the local fighters, Connecticut. Nick Newell joins us right now at Bougie. Notorious Newell. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, man. How are we doing? I'm great, man. Life is good. Life is good. I uh very busy th- these days, but all good uh all good problems to have, you know. Yeah, now if I'm correct, you just had a birth in the family? Is that correct? Yes, yeah. Um my wife and I had our first child, a boy. Uh we named him Wyatt and he is currently 7 weeks old as of Friday. Congratulations, man. I know I have a 16 month or 17 month old now, so and I, so I know how the process is. I know the, the first three weeks are definitely the hardest, and then you kind of just transition to, okay, I can survive a d- daily basis with the daily routine with the kid. But uh, how does that integrate with, the, uh, with, the, um, with your training schedule and stuff like that, you, you, your company that you run? So my, my wife is, like, amazing. Like, she's the most motherly person I've, I've, uh, I've ever met. I've been, like kind of picky when it comes to women and commitment throughout my life. Um, you know, I'm not the oldest guy ever, but I'm 32 right now. And I like, basically you can, um, meet a lot of women that have certain things, but it's hard to meet one. That's like the, the full package, you know, like motherly has her stuff together, isn't crazy there. And like, uh, you know, good looking. And I, I found all those. So she like does, a lot and carries a lot of the weight so far and she's out on um maternity leave from work so um she like has been making the whole process a lot easier on me obviously and i love helping her out too so anything i have to do like stay up rock him do all that stuff i i love doing it so it's it's not really work to me if you if you enjoy it as you know nick did you go away to college yeah, I did go to college. Where'd you go? Um, so when I went there, it was Western New England College, Winnick, but now it's Western New England University. You guys party up there? Did I party in college? Uh, maybe, maybe a, a little, a little too much. You know, I, I think, <laughs> I think when I uh, when I was in college, it seemed like a good idea, and then when I was done and and wrestling and stuff like that, I had a lot of regrets. You know, I wish I could have managed my time a little better and been a little more dedicated, but it all worked out because I transferred that motivation over to my fight career. Yeah, man. And that injury. It's like, I hear all the time, the cold colleges, whether it's UMass, Syracuse, URI, like you guys party up there, man, in the cold weather. Um, did you guys get into like a lot of scraps? Because my friend was on a college team at Buffalo and they were the toughest ones, even though the football team thought they were tough, man, the college guys, if, the, if both teams were drunk, the, the wrestling team was winning. You get into any scraps? Well, the wrestling team's going to whoop your ass no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like if you look at all the champions that are like all the best fighters in the world, they're all wrestlers because wrestlers just mentally are in a different place and they don't care. You do a True. sport that literally no one cares about and then prides itself on, on hard work and how hard you can work and outworking people. And you have to cut weight like multiple times a week. It just makes you so tough. So, I mean, no sport in the world is going to be able to beat up a team of wrestlers. Um, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, man. But, I mean, I don't, I never really got into a lot of fights because, um, like, I just don't care about a lot of things. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> it does. Like, people say things to me, people are rude. People, someone bumps into me, spills something on me. Like, I just don't really care. I'm like, whatever, you know? <laughs> so it's, like, hard for me to get angry like that enough to to fight someone. I mean, I like fighting. It's fun, but I'm not, like, a mean guy. So if, if, uh, if something came like that and I get aggravated, I'm pretty good at, like, taking a deep breath. Now, take us through this because, you know, you are you start out as wrestler, wrestler and you say you're disciplined, you don't – you're not you, you like fighting but you're not looking to ha- catch a fight on the street or whatever but how do you how do you decipher what what changes when the door closes and now you're in a in a fight for you know kind of like your life type of thing that, that that is kind of it's your family it's money it's all that stuff take us what what changes what what sparks you no i mean i've had to check a few a few people 
on the street. You know, I can't <laughs> say that I'm perfect, but like I would put some people in their place. But really, to me, it's uh, I, I I enjoy it and I'm competitive and I realize that it's a sport. You know, I hate these people that are like, well, I don't hate them. I just don't. It's not for me. I think it's corny. <laughs> when they're like, oh, I'm a gladiator and I'm a lion and like I eat people and this is my destiny. Like I fight because it's it's fun and I bust my ass when I, when I train and I bust my ass in a cage when I fight and give it my all because I hate losing. Uh, again, we're being joined by Nick Newell. You know, Nick, the one thing that we uh, – the, the UFC Brooklyn event just took place, and, and you tried to jump in to face Chance Reckentor, uh just due to the fact that his opponent dropped out, and it didn't work out. Um, but – and you – did you ever – did it seem like it was ever going to happen, and or were you that close to being ready to fight? No, I was ready to fight. That's why I said that I would fight. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have said, like, if they called me up, I wouldn't have been like, whoa, whoa you guys are serious? You know, like, I was I was ready to go. I mean, uh, I don't really see them, like, because they're so hesitant when it comes to me um, giving me a short notice opportunity. But I always just let it be known that I'm ready no matter what. And uh, it doesn't even matter the weight class. You know, I can move up a weight class, no problem. I'm not the biggest 155-pounder in the world by any means, but I'm also not the smallest. And I fought at 170 before. It's not a big deal. Does it fire you up? Uh, I don't know. I believe it was the UFC Chicago post-fight press with Dana White. I think you were brought up. Um, does it fire up when, did you hear those comments about Dana? Where he goes, if I let this guy fight in the UFC, you guys would be saying one thing. He's like basically calling the media hypocrites. He was kind of blaming on the media why you're not getting a shot. To, does that kind of fire up? Like to get you going? Did you see that press conference? Yeah, I don't really watch it. I watch the fights, you know, um, Man. and people send me stuff, but I honestly don't even always watch it. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, he has to say the things to protect himself. And he has to look out for himself before anything. So, like, I don't take things like that personal. He seems you know, really nervous. Man. I lost. I lost in the contender series. Um, if I won, I would have been in the UFC. So it's kind of disappointing. I'm kind of disappointed in myself and mad at myself because um, I felt like I could have done a few things different. But also, you know, um, I think they gave me the hardest possible match, style wise that that they could. You know. Uh, and I fought a really great fighter who's going to have a, a great career. So I'm not making excuses. It was like a good fight. It was a tough fight. And I didn't win and the world didn't end. You know, that's, I think, what they were always scared of, that, like, I would lose a fight and, like, the world would come tumbling down and the company would have to close <laughs> yeah, its for, doors. And, like, it would be I the lost and people movie. were like, I, I lost and people were like, ah, he lost, huh? That sucks. I like him. You know, like, yeah. and that was the end. And... You know, I, I fought a really elite fighter, even though it's on it was on the contender series. Not all the best guys in the world are are in the UFC. There's guys outside the UFC that are amazing and better than the people in the UFC. Um, so, you know, it, it just things happen, and and sometimes you have good days, and sometimes you have bad days. And uh, I know where I stand, and I know I'm elite, and. I wouldn't be doing this if I felt like I was going to lose. I would only do it if if I knew that I was capable of doing it cuz you know all the things I have to deal with, all the people's opinions that are thrown my way that I never asked for, you know, that the hate I get um and stuff or even trying, you know, like oh, I can't believe you think this like like how about you just shut your mouth and just let me try it, you know? Um so I, I know where I stand and I know what I'm capable of. So it's, it's, uh, you know, I'm not done yet. Do you, are you frustrated with the fact that like, you know, what, what is their, what is their hesitation? Like, and I know you're right. The Munoz fight wasn't fantastic. I'm sure that you, you said that that wasn't the best uh, matchup for you in that spot. Um, but also everyone has their bad day. We've seen it before that tons of the best elite fighters, GSP got knocked out by Matt Serra. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's a good wrestler, and he wrestled me. And I was going for the kill the whole time. I almost had a guillotine. I almost, I rocked him with a front kick. You know, I was I was trying to to finish the fight the whole time, but the name of the game is is uh, 
control and he definitely did a, a great job at that and he's a he's like a, a great fighter so it's it's uh it's whatever you know I'll, I'll be fine my life goes on my friends my family everyone still loves me my coaches still want to work with me everything so i'm not done yet i i know where i stand i might not be perfect and and you know be batting a thousand but um i'm definitely one of the best in the world and and that's without hesitation i've been I prefer, I'm a guy that prefers small camp. You know, I like the attention. I like um, being a priority. I just like having a smaller camp for my progress. But I've gone to big camps and like, you can ask anyone um, at any of those, the big ones that I visited how good I am and if I'm, I'm capable. And they all say the same thing that I am. Does it agitate you though? that they give UFC, and, and then listen, there's other promotions out there. It's not just about the UFC, but we all know that you would like to get the UFC, and we'd love to see you in the UFC, like in, a, in whether it's a fight night, a pay-per-view event, we'd love to see you in the UFC for sure. But does it agitate you when you see someone like a Greg Hardy get an opportunity or CM Punk get two pay-per-view opportunities, and you're just like, dude, I could beat the crap out of CM Punk. Like, I mean, literally, you could, you could have done better. For than, real. I mean, seriously, does that bother you? Uh, you know, I, I, I just don't carry that kind of negative energy to me. CM Punk is like a guy that made the most out of his star power and who he is and, and, and got paid, you know, he made over a million dollars from the UFC. So, um, props to him for like doing a little bucket list thing. He might not be like a, a fighter <laughs> or someone that dedicated even, uh, hundreds of the time that I've dedicated to this, but you know, I can't blame him for doing it. I, I like him. He's been a, a fan of mine for, for a long time and always supported me. So I, I don't have anything negative to say about him. Uh, Greg Hardy is also another thing. It gets like a lot of attention and for some reason they want to do it. It's, it's their company. They can, they can do whatever they want, you know, in terms of skill, you know, um, with both those guys, I'm, I'm much better skill wise, but, um, again, they're just trying to do their thing and I can't blame them for doing their thing and trying to fight and taking an opportunity that has been given to them. Um, you know, would I like that opportunity? Yes. Um, but am I going to cry because I didn't get it? No, I'm good. I'm just going to hit the ground running and keep working. Again, we're joined by Nick Newell on Twitter at notorious Newell. Uh, Again, referencing that Dana White presser, I, I believe it was UFC 225 Chicago, which I, I think CM Punk was on. I think he was fighting, fighting Michael Jackson, uh, uh, so apropos with the name. But uh, referencing that, man, he was saying if something goes wrong with Nick, you guys are going to be on my ass. Now, Nick, I'm going to ask you, has anything happened in training or during your fights with your arm? Like, has anything, like, opened up? Or I, I know you were born with this, so it's probably sealed better, but has anything happened? No, my arm, like, doesn't hurt me at all. Okay. <laughs> like I'm not in like pain. Like I even forget that I only have one hand, you know, I, I live a normal life everywhere. I go, people treat me normal. You know, when people see me, sometimes I get scared at a lot, but I mean, in training, I'm, I have, you know, I, I have my days and I have good days, bad days, just like anyone else. Um, there was like this myth that I can't block head kicks, which was like the dumbest thing that I ever Dude, heard. Dude, I saw the video I, you put out. That was great at your training facility. <laughs> You're like, I just yeah, go I can block a head I kick. Down. I can okay. block a head kick just fine. I could also get kicked in the the head, just like anyone else that fights can get kicked in the head. So it's like kind of like a silly topic. I, I to me, my hand is a non-issue. You know, I don't want special treatment. I don't want special rules i don't want anything i just want equal treatment and i want um to be treated just like everyone else and that's that's all i ask for amazing man amazing now where, where the hell does this mental fortitude come through obviously you made it through a wrestling career talking to gregor galipsky he's like i did my sentence of being a college wrestler dude you, you survived college wrestling you're a successful mma fighter i mean uh, you deal with all this fucking trolling online and i see your attitude about it. it's very upbeat Dude, where does this mental fortitude come from? Is it being a Patriots fan? Are you a Patriots fan? Where, where does this, where does all this positivity come from? No, I'm not a Patriots fan. Thank, I, uh, thank God. Thank you. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. I will like, I don't really care too much about football, to be honest with you. 
I respect like the athletes and like the the work that goes in with it and how amazing some of these guys are. Um, you know, typically I'll, I'll root for the Giants um, over any other team, but I got to respect Tom Brady and everything he's accomplished. But most of my friends are, are Patriots fans, so I'll, I'll usually root against them. <laughs> Good, I love that. Um, but, dude, dude, so, sticking with you, like, yeah, where does the mental, like, positivity come from, dude? Because you've been through the rigmarole of shit. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, like, been there, heard that. Everything that you could possibly imagine being said to me has been said to me. And uh, at first, you know, it hurt my feelings, and I'm like, oh, shucks, you know? But, like, you can either, <laughs> like... You know, you could be a victim of circumstance or you can create your own. And and to me, it's like, I'm not just going to sit there like a little bitch and like want people to feel sorry for me. I want people to remember me. I want to be, you know, a legend. I want my son to be proud of me when I get, when I grow up. You know, I don't want to be a guy that was like, oh, life's too tough. I'm going to make excuses. Like, I don't know. It doesn't have, it's. It's the competitor in me. I think I was just born competitive, so I just kind of have a fuck it attitude. Let's go. I love, I love that. Brother. Love I love it. them. Uh, you know, we're talking to Nick Newell, and you know, not for nothing, but you're you're killing it right now as far as your record. I mean, not record. I I hate the fact that like everyone's talks about their record, but sometimes you have to look at it. Like, dude, you've had two losses in, in your MMA career. The first one coming from Justin Gaethje. I mean, that's. That, that that was that's unbelievable. Ain't that no could, schlub. Yeah, I mean, look at look at the, otherwise you, you, going to your the the uh, Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender. You you won fourteen fights. I mean, that's not a joke. You are a serious com- fighter. Like this is you are are competitive, and you could be in any of these promotions outside of the UFC. Have you tried to make your way? I mean, you were in the World Series of Fighting for a while, which is now the PFL. Have you thought about trying the PFL route again? I mean, that that million dollar prize is pretty tasty. Season two, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just looking to, to fight again right now. I have a, a contract um, still, I believe, with LFA. and uh, But, you know, I'm open to anything that's a good a good opportunity. And honestly, like right now, I'm, I'm moving my gym. So my gym right now is like 3,000 square feet, maybe, you know. And I'm, uh, I'm moving to a 10,000 square foot facility. And... And you can't fight forever, so this is like my future. You know, this is what's going to provide for my family. So right now, I'm just waiting till everything's settled in that. But I'm training still. I'm just not. I'm just not like focusing on my diet. To make 55, I have to like kind of go crazy with my diet. And like in fight camp, if if my body's sore and I feel like crap, I'll take a day. I'll. I'll I mean, I'll, I'll push through it and train. You know, and now if I feel like a little run down or my body's not agreeing with me. I can like take a day off or, or go easy on the day. So um, those are like the only main differences, but I have my guy, Justin Sumter's fighting at Bellator on February 16th. So, um, you know, I'm helping him get ready and it's definitely not easy. I, I, I have to, I have to bring my A game every time I train with him. So it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in good shape. <laughs> you just, you, but you said that you know that you you yourself like that small camp uh, atmosphere. You know, you're taking it from a three thousand square foot to a ten thousand square foot. That's clearly not small camp anymore. You're making it much bigger. You know, do, it, it, the, the school's growing. That's great. But does that uh, is that make it more difficult for you? I mean, you have a lot lot going on. You have your your child, Wyatt. You know, you have uh, you have a lot more responsibility now. I always make it work. You know, no matter what. Love I always it. find a way to make it work, and no matter what I have going on, I I uh, always find a way to get the things that need to be done done. They say uh, if you want something done, ask someone who's busy, and I keep my plate full all the time, so I'm constantly moving, constantly working, and uh, and just keeping keeping everything, keeping the wheels rolling, and I'm getting everything I I want to get done done so i should be back in there may or june 100 percent um fight again i was willing to take that short notice fight i was willing to fight at bellator in february but it just didn't come it just didn't come about so i'll wait till may or june and then whoever i fight is like 
in a lot of trouble because I'm super motivated and, uh, you know, I'm going to have like, a the facility that I'm moving my gym to is going to be absolutely amazing. And Connecticut is kind of coming together and kind of putting the pieces together to kind of make a name for itself. There haven't really been a lot of guys from Connecticut that were, were making noise. You know, you had me and then, uh, Matt Bissett, who was in Bellator and fought in the OC. And then, um, you know, Brendan Ward, who was in Bellator for a while, but there's like a lot of guys you don't, you don't know of that are from Connecticut that are really starting to make a name for themselves. And, and honestly, like very, very impressed with a lot of these guys that, uh, I have in my camp. Um, some of them are amateurs right now and they're just getting groomed to be pros, but I feel like, um, I don't see a reason why my camp can't be like, uh, still like not like a hundred fighters, but like a, a good, like 20 fighter camp that, um, has a lot of really good guys. Nice. Amazing, man. Yeah. It's fun to see even the small countries you talk about Connecticut, but even like the small countries jumping into the MMA scene, man, we're really starting to see this sport globalize. It's amazing that you're doing your part of it. When's the grand opening for the gym? Uh, so my gym's open right now in, in West Haven, Connecticut. Okay. Um, but, I should be in the new location by March and then probably have a grand opening in, uh, probably have my grand opening sometime in April, you know, uh, cause April, April 2016 is when I opened the gym in West Haven. So like kind of three years to the date would be, would be really cool to unveil this new facility. And then maybe a couple of weeks after that, I'll get some, uh, some of my friends that have like big names to come do like a seminar and stuff like that. And, and I just love sharing and I, I love teaching and I love competing and I love fighting. So, um, you know, I took a little time off to heal my body, but my body feels great. And I have, I really have my shit together right now. You know, I'm, I'm my school's doing well, so I'm not fighting for, for the money. I'll always ask for as much as I can. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm fighting because I love it and, and I really don't feel like I have anything to prove to anyone. I've already shown how good I am, but for me, I have personal goals that I set out for myself. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stop until, until I set my, my personal goals, I accomplish them or, um, it gets to the point where I realize that it's a hundred percent. <laughs> not going to happen, you know, but there's only one way to find out and, and that's a try. And I, I truly believe that I could make them happen. Amazing. Yeah. The, the hardest part is showing up, man. And you've, you've done a fantastic job. Honestly, I hope we can make it out there in April. I mean, uh, to the day I see on your Twitter at notorious Noel, uh, April 25th, 2016. So, uh, maybe the outside the cage team will make it up there, man. Seriously. Mazel tov on the new gym. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And you guys are, are, uh, are welcome anytime obviously um anyone's <laughs> welcome i'm i'm pretty pretty laid back pretty nice guy no head kicks you, no uh, head kicks we're nice guys yeah you, you can't head kick me no, nick. <laughs> hey nick one question i have for you because you you talked about you know you uh, bringing in some of uh well-known fighters or, or you know that that you ha- that have uh, that you have to come to your your academy but what you know recently we've seen an uptick of celebrity power you know we see the the greg hardy experiment we've seen the the cm punk experiment but like for example we just saw i don't know if you saw but like the guys from saved by the bell put tweeted out a picture of them to rolling you know bjj jonah like hill's that. rolling around yeah now. i see that. is that is that cool is that like do you see some people like walk into your gym that are like local like celebrities and like that like hey you know i want to do this can we give it a shot is that is that kind of happening right now is that why the gym is, is growing that much uh no, I I'm in Milford, Connecticut. I don't know how many celebrities we have here. You know, I'm I'm probably <laughs> the most famous person. And then we have like uh like Dan Patrick, I think, runs a show out of my town. So he rolls and with then, you too? <laughs> Does he roll? And then there's like a NHL goalie that's from Connecticut, but he definitely from my town, but definitely doesn't live there. So it's like uh you know, yeah, I don't have any celebrities yet coming and training at my gym but uh i don't know if they want to they can you know it'll be good for business 
Hey, listen, that's what I said. Like, I, I keep on telling you. I'm going to get Screech to come train at my gym. <laughs> Hell, <it's laughs> just, I think he's in jail, dude, so that might be hard. But, yeah, I'd give it a yeah, shot. Yeah, when he gets out of when he gets out of the clink, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, he's going to go fight A.C. Slater and, uh, and Zach. <laughs> there we go. I can I see you in the leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, I, 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 that's the one thing I do love about MMA now. It has definitely crossed. It's it's. It is been legitimized for a while, but it's definitely grown, and it it, it helps because like you, you're able to build your gym, and it's you're going from three thousand square foot to ten thousand square foot. That's awesome. We love it, man. And Nick, again, thank you for the time, dude. And we wish best of luck for everything, the grand opening, and your fighting career, and Wyatt as well. That's awesome, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Nick. Take it easy, brother. Yeah. Have a good one.